So you have to have steady hands. That was patio start, then patio end, leaf tip, and leaf edge. What we have in this system that we've built is a mobile sensor platform. That platform is a mechanism by which we can take frequent, repeated measurements of the properties of the plants growing beneath that platform. We really want to know the timing of events. That's very clear. That's our main question. And how the plants are greening up. Are they getting greener and greener every year or not? The satellite imagery suggests at least along the Arctic coast that it's much greener now in the peak season than it was 20 years ago. One chapter of my master's project is focusing on how the deciduous shrub, Betula nana, and Cedex procra, how the stem structure and the arrangement of leaves along the stem, how that may influence whole plant performance, or how that may influence carbon assimilation. What starts the growing season is when the snow melts, not when it's warm enough. It's often warm enough for plants to grow and photosynthesize, but the snow, the blanket there, is keeping them kind of trapped in that sort of winter state. I go onto the field, I collect samples of the different growth forms that I see. So usually it's plagiotropic, which is a prostrate growth form, which is horizontal, grows in the ground. And then there's an orthotropic growth form, which is a more erect or vertical growth form of the deciduous shrub. The other thing that's really cool about under the snow is that the soil is respiring underneath there, and so CO2 is coming up from the soil. They have this blanket here that's kind of trapping gas exchange there so that CO2 can build up in there. So they're almost like CO2 fertilization under the snow while these things are getting some light through. It's not terribly cold, and some water is dripping down in there. I'm looking to see how these differences in growth form may influence overall the, the plant's ability to capture sunlight and assimilate carbon. One thing is that plants can photosynthesize at lower temperatures than they can grow. So the temperature that a plant can grow, actually expand the leaves and get bigger, is probably, the threshold is probably higher than photosynthesis. Although there's definitely some plants that are growing under the snow. The area from here, the cotton grass, the, you can see some of the flowering stalks have already extended and they're still covered with snow. These plants are able to respond to the conditions that they're in. And if conditions are warming up, then it makes sense for plants to grow more vertical rather than on the ground. It is advantageous to be closer to the ground, but since conditions have seen a trend toward a more warmer environment, then these deciduous shrubs have grown more vertical. What I do is I go up to every node position along the stem, and a node includes a branch or a leaf, and I take a coordinate. And I'm able to do this because of this transmitter. This transmitter emits a magnetic field around it that whenever I push this button, on this pointer, I'm able to take a coordinate of a node position. And it's ultra fine scale, it's down to the millimeter. And I'm able to get node positions that are very close to each other. And I'm also able to get leaf orientation and direction. I put it through a model. And in this model, I run a simulation of a whole day. And within this day, I'm trying to find out what this individual is doing. And these individuals obviously are growing in different ways. 